You're watching NDTV Profit. Let's take a quick look at where the Nifty and the Sensex are. We're expecting a flattish day. Yes, that's where it is, 86.95 below 8700. Uh, there's going to be some data coming in. And then next week, there are two holidays, Tuesday and Wednesday. So before the Sera, you shouldn't expect too much movement on the Sensex and the Nifty. Well, uh, you know, if you are one of those people uh, who has to claim, uh, you have to show your bills and claim some reimbursements some uh, on restaurant bills sometimes, and you've often got those restaurant bills which uh, fade away in a month, and therefore you can't claim that money, well, let me tell you, there is an answer for this. And uh, for that, uh, I have with me Pankaj Poddar. This is not Pankaj Poddar of NDTV Profit, but he's the CEO of uh, Cosmo Films. Uh, let me start off with that. You were just telling me in the break, Mr. Podda, that you're coming up with a solution to that. Yeah. Direct printing on paper instead of film. Yeah. Mm. So, see, we basically initially launched a direct thermal printable film, mm. uh, which can take a similar printing. It's a very niche concept. Uh, mm. And globally, the market is growing at a reasonable pace. Uh, for India, especially, uh, or I would say South Asia, it's a very new concept. So, mm. when we started promoting this concept in India mm. and globally, we realized that in India, even for the paper market, yeah. there's actually uh, no real big player. Mm. There are a lot of imports happening. Mm. And uh, even if you talk about the India local production, there are very small players. There's a lot of inconsistent quality mm. that was there in the market. Mm. So we felt that, look, it's, it will be, one is for us, it will be easier to promote both the film and the paper because mm. it will move through the same channel partnership. Mm. But at the same time, we'll be able to fill the need of the market, which right. uh, is there, you know, that ink fades away very quickly. Mm. There's very inconsistent quality. Mm. Uh, so we, we have recently actually launched, along with the film, mm. we have launched the paper as well. All right. Uh, so now we'll be able to, and the beauty about it is that the ink retention will be for a much, much longer period. But can period. it be used on the same machines? Yeah, so the machine, the printing machines are same. Mm. And uh, actually, if you talk about film, there are three different ranges uh, mm. because the temperature sensitivities are different. Mm. Film is typically used either for the refrigerated applications or, you know, uh, slightly on the warm side. Okay. So you have to have labels which can take this different uh, mm. temperature resistance. Mm. So in the film category also now, uh, rather than just having one product, now we have the complete three product portfolio. Mm. Uh, but even if I talk about the paper, now we have something in the paper also. All right. And it's a far superior product for the mm. market. Uh, so that's a new launch that we have done. So you essentially, you're, uh, th this all shows that you're essentially diversifying beyond BOPP. As uh, we mentioned last time, that Cosmo Films is the world's biggest producer of thermal laminates. Yeah. It, it does the, and yeah. everyone uses that. But you're now diversifying. Yeah. Now, what is the reason for diversifying? Is the is the laminates uh, business getting saturated? Are the margins contracting a little bit? See, yeah. So that's a you know good question that you asked. It's not that because you know we are our main business is BOPP films and thermal mm. lamination films, and both are growing pretty well. You know mm. because BOPP the main consumption area is packaging. Right. <laughs> and how can packaging degrow in a market like India? Right. So it's been growing at a very quick pace, mm. and that's the reason. Right. Before you move on, has packaging uh, become grown more because of e-commerce? Has has that led to a higher degree of pack packaging? Yeah, so basically our film as yet are not used as much for the, you know, this uh, e-commerce related things. Mm. Uh, maybe that is another area that we are looking to develop something specially for that market. Uh, but if I talk about BOPP, you know, the overall food consumption in the packed food, mm. that's been growing very fast. Okay. Right. And uh, that's the reason that we are putting up on, you know, the new BOPP line is uh, mm. anyways coming in uh, quarter four. Mm. Uh, we had put up a CPP line also, and there also within a very short period, we have developed some very good specialties mm. and line is fully booked uh, already. Mm. Mm. Uh, and, you know, therefore, we have to really look whether CPP is another area where mm. we should uh, do expansion uh, in uh, over a short period. No. Uh, but as you rightly said that we said that, you know, there are so much other growth potential mm. areas and paper is a very small diversification mm. that uh, we have done. Uh, but we we are interested in diversifications mm. which are similar in nature, mm. which actually helps our existing business. You mentioned artificial uh, velvet last time, right? Something which is yeah. actually a film but looks, feels and... Looks, like, Looks velvet. like velvet, yeah. And you launched more of those things? Yeah, so earlier we had just uh, velvet film in the BOPP and nylon. Mm. What we have done is, uh, you know, there's a concept called black velvet. Okay. So this is a black finish mm. and it gives a very, very luxury finish, you know, uh, to boxes where they just don't want to print anything. They just want to have uh, uh, maybe a small uh, golden or a silver okay. logo or something. Right. Uh -huh. And the entire surface need to look, uh, you know, like black velvet. in color. Yeah. 
and at the same time have that velvet touch. Mm. So we have recently done it. Uh, we have just launched it in one color. Mm. We are now actually capable to launch in other colors also. But I think a market like this product, uh, pretty much we have just started to do the trials and, mm. and we have we have done beautiful uh, job mm. uh, in terms of getting a very good product on the mm. on the velvet side as such. All right, you just announced that you've uh, bought a new piece of land right next to your uh, existing. So what are you going to do there? Yeah, so we have uh, recently, uh, I would say very fortunate mm. that we got a land uh, which is just adjacent to our existing plot in Aurangabad. Yeah. We have actually in Aurangabad, we have two plants, one in uh, Shendra, which mm. is SCZ plant meant mm. only for exports. And the other plant is at uh, Waluj area, which is again a part of Aurangabad. Uh, so this uh, Waluj plant, there was another uh, plot which was available and we, uh, you know, we actually quickly grabbed on that. Mm. So our existing plot is somewhere between 16 to 17 acres and we got a new uh, plot which is 34 acres. Uh, we have simultaneously also had applied for government for a 1000 crore expansion plan and okay. we have got an approval for that. Mm. So our plan is to invest 1000 crores in Maharashtra over a period of five years, mm. uh, you know, uh, in, in similar areas mm. and therefore this is going to have the future expansions of course. But the existing plot, uh, plot, you said that there is a plot already in Aurangabad. Is yeah, that but no space. No space. <laughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. So no space, but the advantage of this is that, uh, you know, mm. the administration becomes far easier. Yeah. Uh, the cost, either from administration cost or utility cost, uh, you know, would again be uh, mm. very economical to be at the same place. Right. So good thing is our entire management team sits, uh, you know, some of the senior colleagues sit at that plant. Okay. And getting a plot there, right there. And so yeah. it's a pretty good uh, industrial mm. area, you know, mm. with uh, some of the very good industry names out there. Mm. The thousand crore expansion plan, how are you funding that? Yeah, so uh, I think it will be internal accruals and uh, okay. and the debt part. Uh, our balance mm. sheet looks uh, quite strong and therefore mm. a lot of potential to take debt. Mm. Uh, at the same time, you know, we had passed earlier an enabling resolution for QIP. So uh, if at all there's a need at the right time, we will come back to the market. Mm. But at this stage, I think uh, some of these uh, things, you know, uh, that we've been doing. How long is that uh, resolution valid? Do you have to get it renewed or is this valid forever? Yeah, I think uh, this is valid only till this year. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, we can always go because in the year beginning, we were thinking that mm. whether we need it or not, but mm. let's have an uh, enabling resolution. Mm. But we realized that our cash flows continue to be very strong and therefore we didn't go so for you this. you might not need the... Yeah. yeah. So in the immediate term, I don't think so we need it. But, mm. uh, you know, to have a quick growth for the company, I think mm. uh, at the right time, we may come come back to the market. All right. Uh, before I go back to BOPP and uh, polypropyl and uh, prices, uh, the new place, is it going to also be BOPP, is it going to be new products? I'm asking that. I know yeah. the answer you gave me in the break that you're not going to tell us. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, what are you waiting for before you answer that question? I think we need to have first internal approvals. Uh, okay. You know, we have to have the board approvals for that. And obviously the entire thousand crores we are not going to announce in one go. Mm. Uh, it will come gradually over a phased manner because it's a five-year investment horizon mm. that we are talking about. Uh, but at the same time, as I said, we are looking either in the BOPP or similar to BOPP, which actually helps our BOPP business. All right. Okay. So uh, these are related areas that we are looking at where we feel we are very confident mm. that we can do a very good job. Mm. And again, the focus of the company will continue to remain on specialization. So we are not really looking at commodity markets. Mm. Uh, we will be driven by speciality and uh, the right. projects that we are studying mm. uh, will be kind of import substitution for India mm. or, uh, you know, or those areas, you know, where we can add a lot of value to the mm. Indian market to the global market. You, when I asked you about e-commerce, you said that you're still not into it. You might look at that space as well. Yeah. Right now, you're not looking at it. No, there's no immediate plans as yet, mm. but that's a thing for development, you know, because mm. we see this market growing pretty well and it has a lot of packaging needs. Mm. Until now, what I see is largely bubble wraps and corrugated boxes used. Mm. It's an expensive uh, right. mode of packaging. I mean, they send the individual, you might have ordered four things, they send it in four different bubble yeah, exactly. wraps. Yeah, exactly. So they do consume quite a bit of it. Exactly. So that mm. is an area that we have to look at. In fact, a uh, couple of times there had been internal discussion, but we have to do some development for that. And okay. uh, I don't think so. We have uh, any anything as yet mm. on the table. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether it will be BOPP or it will be a combination of mm. uh, two or three different products, but we have to come out with it. Uh, nothing that we have done as yet, uh, but this is under watch, mm. I can say. Okay, let me go to polypropylene. We've discussed this last time as well that although oil prices dropped dramatically from above 100 to 30 dollars, it's going up again. Polypropylene did not really correct that much, right? It has been volatile. It's been trading within a particular range. Yeah. 
what is the impact on you as a company see if i talk about as a long term or let's say medium term last two years mm-hmm. when the oil came down from 100 to 40 dollars mm. uh, the polypropylene prices also fell down from 1500 dollars to roughly 1000 dollar range all right so there but, was a yeah so there was a correction mm. but at the same time there was a correction in our price because uh, it's complete pass through right. mm. uh, especially when we talk about commodity it passes mm. Mm. you know even before the correction mm. happens mm. Uh, specialties yes uh, you know given that polypropylene content is very small mm. and therefore uh, to that extent we are able to retain it mm. uh, but if you uh, really you know rest of the portion is you know overheads or or r and d or yeah, whatever yeah. you know so mm. that's that's mm. the our piece of business uh, but if you really ask me uh, for last one and a half years since the time mm. oil has stabilized mm. i would say polypropylene also has stabilized to a large extent okay and it is uh, you know i would say staying in a range of 939 40 dollars mm. to 1050 dollars mm. you know so it's it's pretty been uh, range down but uh, in terms of are there any substitutes which are directly uh, crude related substitutes to polypropylene see that's again a very good question that you have asked i'll share some data with the viewers also mm. see in india food packaging uh, our bopp consumption is only 44% okay while if you see globally it's it's almost 75% the polypropylene family mm. and so a lot of the indian converters are pretty much used to using pet mm. which personally in my opinion uh, one is uh, you know it, it's an expensive structure yeah. because in a bopp you are able to do it in a two film structure mm. while in a polyethylene tupelate you know this pet structure you have mm. to actually use a three layer structure all right so it's a more expensive structure mm. uh, again it's uh, environmentally i would not say as friendly as bopp is mm. because bopp melting point is much lower yeah. so cost of uh, or let's say the energy consumed to reconvert it is much cheaper mm. bopp the density is much better mm. and therefore you get more uh, film per uh, per kilo mm. so i think indian market is uh, in a process where it is It's gradually moving towards bopp for the food packaging mm. industry concerned mm. mm. and i think uh, that's an area we are also kind of educating the customers that look this is the right product for you mm. uh, you know food packaging globally these are the reasons that uh, it's used in mm. a much higher ratio than pet mm. i mean obviously pet has its own advantages in terms of it can carry more weight yeah. uh, especially when you want an aroma barrier mm. you certainly mm. need a pet so pet has its own advantages but there are a lot of areas in india mm. that we continue to use where it can replace uh, yeah where it should replace mm. and i think gradually converters in india are realizing it mm. they are changing it the brands are also realizing it mm. and therefore they are looking for more bopp related structure mm. so in my personal view bopp, BOPP pp growth mm. should be uh, much better in the future all right uh, pankaj bodha thank you so much for coming in and uh, we're going to have you back when you're in a position to tell us yeah, sure. what you're going to do in that hour of nawab sir thanks a lot thank you very much thank you all right uh, we're going to take a short break we'll be back in just a couple of minutes uh, we'll be joined by the management of gayatri projects tv sandeep kumar reddy is md of gayatri projects will be joining us